COVID today, but COVID booster rollout is uh, seeing 1.5 million invitations to elderly uh, and vulnerable people from today. I mean, you know, that that's not uh, really so controversial as the other big rollout, and that is the rollout of COVID jabs for 12 to 15 year olds, which is uh, due to start as early as today. Uh, but uh, is there proper informed consent uh, for those children and their parents? And what happens if parents do object? Well, let's talk about this with Professor John Fairclough. He's a retired orthopaedic surgeon and joins us. Good morning to you, John. Uh, good morning, Chair. Um, I mean, obviously, um, it, it's very much the case that those who are the most vulnerable, getting a booster jab can certainly help them. Although it would make more sense to me if we did an antibody test on those people first to check whether they did have any immunity. Uh, yes, I think that's absolutely correct. I, I, and uh, what's interesting is that the um, uh, then Sarah Gilbert, who was, after all, the, the um, individual who actually invented the uh, AstraZeneca virus, actually countenanced against yeah. um, um, giving a booster. And but more importantly, also worldwide, the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration in the United States, also suggested that the rollout um, universally for everyone was uh, uh, the incorrect way of proceeding. So it, it really is um, uh, now accepted that that is not the method that we should be choosing. Well, in, indeed, um, in terms of uh, rollout of the jabs, I mean, that's the sort of, you know, first of all, over 90s, over 80s, those who are very vulnerable uh, uh, and, and medical problems. But to healthy 12 to 15 year olds, that's a completely different matter. That's going to start as soon as today. Uh, parents will be getting, or oh, children will be sent home with uh, letters uh, to sign to give them consent. Um, I've had a look at uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the, the letters that are being sent out by the government. They're available on the official website. And for coronavirus vaccine consent form for children and young people. And um, it's easy. It's an easy read. And it's just got lots of nice pictures. And it's very easy. It says things like, one way to help you stay safe is to get a coronavirus vaccine. The coronavirus vaccine should stop you getting very poorly if you do catch coronavirus. There is a small chance you can still catch coronavirus if you've had the vaccine. Um, if you or your parent or carer is worried about you having the vaccine, you can talk to your doctor. Um, and as far as I can tell, that that's pretty much as far as it goes. It talks about your arm might get a bit sore and the like. Um, but at no point during any of this document, with lovely, lovely pictures, does it say that actually there is a small risk to having had the vaccine, as there is a small risk to having COVID for children. Uh, and that, you know, the JCVI has weighed up those risks and says that the marginal benefit does not justify uh, having that vaccine. And that includes children, by the way, who uh, who, who, who haven't had, the, uh, the, had COVID naturally, let alone those who have. What do you make of both the decision of the government to overrule the JCVI and the abject failure to in enable youngsters and their parents to give informed consent. I think this is probably, I've been in medicine now well, for five decades. I think this is probably one of the most dangerous um, uh, efforts that we've had in medicine because what we're doing is we're in effect overturning the position of medical um, individuals for political purposes. But let's go back a little bit to what uh, the consent issue is. The consent is that you are aware of what the consequences of a medical action is. Uh, recently, one of the members of uh, SEGE chose to go on the radio station, not yours, um, and actually interview or be interviewed uh, with three or four young children and actually wasn't able to give the information which is on the government website and had to Google it. Mm. He also got the rate of inflammation uh, of the heart incorrect from the published international data. So if he cannot actually be aware of the consent issues, then how can a 12 year old? Yeah. And what we have to remember is that in this interview, the child, one of the children, actually had had COVID and one uh, of the published data sets shows that the one aspect is the best um, form of defense you can have is having COVID. I know from your previous that you've had it, Julia, and um, Boris Johnson himself said he was bursting with antibodies. What kind of ludicrous rationale is that to take a vaccine to do something else when you know you have protection? Well, well um, then, yeah. Oh, sorry, and the, and the data is that it's not harmless. 
Well, that, so, that's, this is the key thing. There is the JCVI rules. Not that it was on balance harmful for Jordan, but it was a marginal benefit. But that marginal benefit was so small, it didn't justify the rollout. Because, of course, there are alternative things you could be doing to help children, which would give much more help. But also, that was that was based on every child, just you know, without the consideration of whether a child has had COVID themselves already. So, as we know, of this age group, something like 60% plus are judged to have already had COVID naturally. They, they won't be getting any of the benefit of the jab, but they'll only have the downside, which seems to me to be crazy. And also everything was compared on the known side effects, the known downside. And of course, with children's bodies, we know that they are different from adult bodies. They're not just miniature adults. Their bodies are still growing and developing. And, and we it's not possible for us to know the long term impact on their bodies. Likely, likely there isn't any long term impact, but we don't know that, in which case, if children aren't at risk from this disease, why on earth would we be wasting the valuable resource of jabs that could save the lives of elderly people in, in, in the third world? Why are we giving them jabs? You're, you're absolutely correct. And one of the things in medicine that we have to be aware of is that you can always do nothing in surgery of the many thousands of operations. When we get consent, we say, what happens if you do nothing? And we have this rather bizarre situation. For example, I know that uh, one of the Bet Noirs we both have is Neil Ferguson. Yes. Neil Ferguson is a mathematician. He's an experimental phys um, phys uh, phys uh, physician, I can't say. It. Um, and he was an individual who actually was promoting um, vaccination mm -hmm. in children. Mm -hmm. Now, I know very little about experimental physics, and I'm sure he doesn't know very much about vaccination in children yeah. and when we have this very important situation where our children are at risk even on a minor degree it is something that must be held to the highest level of accountability absolutely couldn't agree with you more professor we'll have to leave it there though professor john fairclough um